Well, welcome everyone to Resource Roundtable. My name is Cindy Brooks. I'm the Executive Director of EDC Team Jefferson. Uh, Resource Round, Roundtable is an event we host every Thursday, the third Thursday, or not every Thursday, the third Thursday of every month, where we invite one or more guests to come and introduce themselves and their services. It's a place where community can come to learn more about resources available to them as they start a business, grow a business, or plan to sell a business. It's a safe place to ask questions and to share information in the spirit of mutual support. So we seek over time to build a network or a community that can seamlessly provide services addressing a range of business questions from startup to succession, ensuring that we have a healthy, resilient, diverse, and engaged small business community. I'm gonna admit somebody, excuse me. Mm -mm. Uh, a little bit about etiquette. Um, we would invite people who are attending to mute themselves unless they are speaking and to put questions in the chat. If we have a small group, we'll just be sure that we can open it up and, and talk to each other freely, but just for the sake of um, letting the speaker kind of speak <laughs> without a lot of uh, audio interference, please put yourself on mute for the short term. Um, and I'd like to say out now, now that we likely we likely represent a multitude of perspectives, and um, this is to create a safe space here. I'd like to um, just say out loud that it's okay to disagree. You know, we're going to agree to disagree for, potentially, but we're all here to learn together and listen and be respectful and um, help each other grow. Um, I have one announcement to make, which is that the Working Washington Five grant has launched just yesterday. And that might be worth Googling and seeing if that applies to you. Um, it's another windfall of money for small business. So please do check that out. And we have resources to help you apply if you're interested. So for now, I'd like to introduce Susan Shoemaker from North Olympic Development Council to discuss websites, social media marketing, and which, which includes e-commerce. We're going to talk about the, me the mechanics or the technical aspect, as well as the messaging, what you might want to say on your platforms. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Susan Shoemaker. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm, I am just delighted with this opportunity to get to um, present to the EDC in Jefferson County. It is, um, it's a passion of mine to support small businesses. Um, some of you may know that uh, my background is I, I am fourth or fifth generation small business owner, and um, I have uh, participated in um, challenges and successes uh, throughout all of my career as it relates to selling things and making small businesses uh, profitable. Um, so I invite you to put your questions in the chat. Um, as we're going, and I'm happy to address them um, as I'm working through my presentation. Um, there are more online businesses uh, today, more than, more than ever. The last three years has accelerated the number of online contacts for all businesses. Um, retail, wholesale, service businesses, businesses with physical locations, e-commerce stores, everyone is getting more and more online contact from people who are uh, potential buyers. So your business needs to be ready to be found. And you need to give lots of details about what you sell and why it is special and how it can be purchased. It's now completely mainstream for consumers to expect they can learn anything about anything from anywhere at any time. Almost everyone holds a web-enabled device, it's either a phone or tablet or in front of a laptop. And it is our primary um, shopping and scheduling accessory. Almost all buying choices are complete before a person reaches out to contact you, the seller or the provider. They've already made up most of their decision whether or not to spend their money. And you as the business owner rarely get an opportunity to influence most sales before your potential customer or client has made the decision about what you offer, except for what you have posted online in your business website and social media posts. And of course, this is not absolute, but it is such a strong, high um, percentage of that 
that um, you are uh, wise to keep your business website and your social media posts really current and really active. Um, your online business assets are your website and your social media accounts. They are a powerful and valuable opportunity to answer customer and client questions and present your business in the most positive light consistently. Today, a robust online business presence is essential for reaching buyers. And I like to break this into two parts. Cindy alluded to this already. I like to talk about the mechanism of your online business presence and then the message of your online business presence. And so the mechanism is essentially all the tools. It's your business website. There is no more impactful digital tool than your own business website. And then um, your social media accounts are also very important, uh, but they cannot effectively take the place of a business website owned by and dedicated to your business. And then the message, once you have those, those tools in place, what are you saying about your business? What are you saying about your products and your services? So your written and image content on your business website and on your social media point posts, that is your message. So I wanna go a little more in depth about the mechanisms. So first of all, the big question is, do you have a business website? If you don't, you need one. And this program, the NODC Business Assistance Program can help with this. Um, I've been, um, a web designer for six years prior to starting uh, this job, and I've worked with um, a lot of local businesses to create business websites and to advise on them. Um, uh, do, next question is, do you own your own business domain address? Do you own your web address or does somebody else? Because you don't want to repurchase that through a service provider. You want to be leasing that yourself directly from um a service that sells business websites. And also, do you know when it is renewed? Domains or web addresses are essentially leased on an annual basis, and you can pay for multiple years at a time. But this is one of your most valuable business assets, and it is essential not to allow that domain address to expire. There are predatory companies out there who are happy to buy up expired business web addresses that a business still needs, and they will sell it back to you for thousands of dollars. So easiest thing is to make sure you keep it current. And that's just a matter of putting it on your calendar and knowing that you own it and knowing who you pay. So the second question um, is, do you have business social media accounts? Do you have Facebook, Instagram? And I wanna take a moment to address TikTok. TikTok has come roaring onto mainstream. Um, it's, become, it's starting to overtake Instagram and Facebook, definitely influencing the user interface and the style of videos. Um, I wanna put a big caveat, big however. Um, it is coming to light, their privacy policy. And I would just refer you to uh, make sure that you know what that privacy policy contains and the permissions that they exact from all users, everyone. And um, I will tell you, and I cannot in good conscience recommend TikTok for any business. And that's like saying, don't take any advertisements on one of the biggest platforms, but I think we all need to just know what we're getting into. So I focus on Facebook and Instagram. And then if we just wanna talk content, I'm happy to talk content that goes on to TikTok, um, but that's not one that I recommend. So the concept about, yeah, go ahead, Cindy. Oh, I can't hear you. Are you muted? I was following my own instruction and muted myself. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was just wondering if you could say a little bit more about the security concerns and what risk um, a business might be engaging in to sign up with TikTok. Um, well, I can't speak from personal knowledge because I have not um, put that application on any of my devices, but uh, it has, uh, there are some YouTube videos and some reviews of TikTok's privacy policy that are searchable online. So we can go out and see who's talking about them. And uh, there have been some um, summaries of what the permissions that are extracted, but it has to do with um, much more than just the app itself. 
that that application has the ability to gather information about um, the user and the user's devices. And it's so comprehensive that it was shocking to me when I heard it. And I, I haven't been able to verify that, but I have pulled way back. I'm not touching TikTok until I know exactly what comes along with loading that application. So that is not on any of my devices. Um, as a professional, I was talking about social media marketing. I'm just, I'm leaving that one alone. And I don't want to go into any more detail because that um, I, I can't speak with knowledge beyond what I've said, except that there's a huge caution. Um, does that answer your question? Okay. All right. So the concept is for social media, once your website is in place, you pick one or two platforms to uh, be uh, doing posts on. More than that, you can really burn up a lot of time. And, you know, big companies can hire somebody to do this as a full-time uh, uh, job. But most small business owners, we have to incorporate that into all the other hats we're wearing. So uh, the method that I recommend is that you create a spreadsheet to organize your plan based on a calendar. And you choose the pace at which you want to post. How often are you going to actually put up a post? And the whole concept behind creating a schedule that's written down, that's thought through, is so that you don't wake up on Thursday morning and think, I've not posted anything about my business. What am I going to say? And you just grab something off the top of your head. And that you know causes anxiety and it's frustrating and it's not as effective as having a plan and working a plan and then editing the plan. Um, so the, the uh, process that I've worked with a number of businesses on is to basically take a, a spreadsheet. And I have a form on an Excel spreadsheet that I am happy to share with anybody who wants to launch into that and happy to work with clients on um, over whatever time it takes us to organize this. And you look at your entire calendar year and you identify holidays and seasons or seasonal events that are pertinent to your business. And you mark those in. And so I'm not gonna pull up the, the spreadsheet here because it would become overwhelming, I think. Um, but for all of the dates that run in one column, you just mark out, okay, so that's, I celebrate Christmas. I celebrate Flag Day. It's um, the start of, of um, uh, cruise season and I sell women's wear. Um, so all the seasonal events and where they happen in the county, like do you, do you participate in any of the festivals that happen in our communities and how much lead time do you need for advertising? So once you have those marked out, you kind of have an idea of what your year is going to present to you. Then you want to look at categories of postings, different types of postings. And the categories can be, I've got um, uh, five uh, suggestions here, but it could be different for your business. Um, are you going to feature a product or service? So uh, feature a product or service, that's one category. Like I'm going to show this beautiful garden rake that I make in my blacksmith shop. Um, or I uh, offer consulting uh, on these sorts of topics. So that's a product or service to feature and to have posts about. So that's one category. Another category can be day in the life of. So here... Here's a picture of me at the farmer's market with my table all set up chatting with people. Or here's a picture or a little video of me working on this small engine and replacing spark plugs. Or here is, um, so it's a day in the life of, and it's sort of like you give people an immersive little experience of what it's like harvesting your um, herbs or um, selling in your shop. Or, so day in the life of category number two. Number three is a seasonal promotion. You've already gone through and identified where those are. So you want to be making posts leading up to those so that when the promotion comes on, it's not a surprise and you got people kind of uh, anticipating that. Number four category would be a staff profile. I'm the owner of the business and I like to tell you about me and my background. And so you you take um, a little snippet, or here's my administrative assistant who keeps me sane and takes care of things, or here um, is our staff installing the roof on Mrs. Jones' house. So staff profile is really nice. And uh, another one I have on my list is community engagement. Do you sponsor a festival or the Little League or the food bank 
Or are you showing up for another business's um, ribbon cutting for a um, chamber event? So what are the kind of community engagement? And for your business, you we could come up with, you know, three or four other categories of posts. So now you have your calendar and you've identified what seasonal things happen. And now you have your list of categories. What kind of posts are you going to do? And then you just go through and decide uh, which account you're going to post it on. If you're just sticking with Instagram, it's simple. Or just Facebook. It's pretty straightforward. Um, you could choose LinkedIn. That's another one I didn't talk about, which has um, great potential for businesses that I think is huge untapped market. Um, and so you just go through the calendar and you make a plan. And once you have, you know, 20 or 30 concepts, say you do three ideas for posts in each of your categories, easy to come up with a good long list and you scatter them in. Are you going to post twice a week? Are you posting every day? Are you going to do once a month? You know, what work, what do you need to do for your business? All right. So that's using the calendar. All right, so I've covered a lot of the nuts and bolts about the mechanisms, the tools. Let's shift to the message. Once you have these things established and they exist, your website exists, your social media accounts exist, it's time to start sending out your messages. And on your website, I, I want to really feature that a lot of people are just thinking, what am I going to post on social media? But really, you need to make sure you've got a home online well established. And your business website, it needs to be the best, most complete welcoming presentation of all aspects of your business. So on your homepage, in my humble opinion, of having built a bunch of websites and worked with and assessed, um, I do reviews of people's websites for them and it's a private confidential service that I do. Um, and I just identify how's it working for you from a person who's just encountering your business. So your homepage needs to present, who are you, where are you, what do you offer, and why should I care? It's essentially your elevator pitch. You know, we, that's a lot of, um, it's a jargon that's used commonly. Um, and so you need to organize what that is. And um, they, they say that 80% of the second visits to a business website are just for contact information. So I think your home page should have your phone number and your email contact information uh, uh, prominently uh, presented. That can be put either in the header, like above the menu of your website, and always should be in the footer. I just think that's best practices. So it's on every page. Um, because like I said, most people, they, they just wanna call you and you wanna make it easy. And so the rest of your homepage should be a summary of what someone is going to encounter throughout the rest of your website. So if you're going to have services pages or a e-commerce shop, it's nice to have a little summary on your homepage. And that's something that for every, every business is kind of unique and different. Um, and so that's one of the things we go over in um, this program. So next I want to talk about your about page. Your about page is one of your richest opportunities for search engine optimization. You don't have to have search engine optimization functioning highly on every single page of your website, but as many pages as is reasonable. And your about page is your first best opportunity. What you write on your about page um, should follow the acronym I use is EAT. E -A -T. It should present your expertise, authority in your field. It should present your trustworthiness. So you want to establish that by the time you have written your whole about page. These days, in order for the search engines to crawl a website page and rank it for search engine optimization, it's just a it's a bigger, broader, harder uh, presentation. Oh, I'm sorry, that acronym is EAT, like E-A-T, expertise, authority, trustworthiness. Thanks for asking for that, Jane. So you're competing for attention. And this is where, you know, we get a little wonky about the whole ranking on, um, on search engine results. So if you want to compete well, you got to have pages on your website that have volumes of valuable information logically nested so that the search engine says, 
I know what the website's about. I know what the page is about. And that makes sense. That tracks with the website address. And the content is written in a way that it tracks with. And I know this page is going to deliver good uh, value for a searcher's time. So I will rank it higher than another website page that doesn't have as much volume of valuable information. And when I say logically nested, I go into this in detail in my one-to-one -one consulting. I do a lot of um, workshopping uh, written content for SEO. Um, let's see here. So you want to follow an outline. And I, I actually have uh, crafted an, an about page outline, which I have personalized for a number of different clients, where essentially after I know enough about your business, then I can break down what are the subcategories that I would want to know and that would make a difference for me. And I've written it in, in such a way that I have writing prompts. And if you just answer the questions, and now you have a nice little three to five sentence paragraph, and then we move on to the next writing prompt. And that's the kind of support that I offer uh, to clients in this program. So once again, your about page, great SEO potential, and you wanna maximize that. The good news is you don't have to do it in the first shot. You can go back and revisit that and edit and work on it again. All right, I'm just gonna hit briefly on e-commerce shops. Um, Basically, it's your it's your um, product catalog online with the ability for people to put it in a shopping cart and give you money. So that's the goal. Um, you want to make sure that you have really high quality images of what they're buying. Um, if you're going to take all your pictures yourself, it's very important that whatever the item is that is for sale, even if it's an online course or a downloadable PDF that you're selling for 99 cents or for $999, that there is a feature image and that image um, is in best practices is on a white background. And so sometimes it takes a little Photoshopping to just make sure that that bottle of lotion or potion or this um, t-shirt or the front cover of the PDF is very clear so that people know I'm buying that. I'm not buying, you know, I'm buying the tomato. I'm not buying the knife and the cutting board and the corn husk that's beside it. I want to know what am I buying? And then additional um, auxiliary images to show as, as is appropriate. So high quality feature image. You want to have your shop organized by categories so people can filter. What are they really looking for? And so thinking through that taxonomy of what are the best categories for my shop once again, nice to work with somebody on that and get some feedback, but you need to have categories. Um, and then written descriptions of products. This is where you have another great opportunity to um, compete highly in the SEO competition for writing good descriptions of products. And in my opinion, most e-commerce shops that I look through there's so much money being left on the table. So people just like, they get weary and they just say, you know, bottle of lotion scented with lavender. It's nice. And, and there's, you know, you're missing so much. So writing through those product descriptions and short description, long description, all the other information you can put, all of that builds the ability for the search engine to say, this product listing is much better than the other four I found and I'm gonna rank it higher. So SEO in e-commerce shops. Um, all websites these days have the ability to have an SSL certificate. And if you don't know, that's an encryption that, uh, that comes into play when somebody is purchasing on your website. And um, if, we, if you don't have an SSL certificate on your website, uh, the search engines will flag you. And even just informational websites need SSL certificates. You can get one for free, but it has to be installed. So you wanna make sure that one's in place. Hey, All right. Sue, um, Jay asked a question in the chat about an acronym. Jay, do yeah, you know I, I addressed that. That's the EAP, okay. yeah. All right, sorry. No worries. And Thank I've you. just admitted Eric, so I want to welcome Eric to the room. Excellent. Hey, Eric, thanks for joining. Okay, so I'm going to, uh, can, I, can I just press ahead? Yeah. Okay. Um, let's talk about services page. Let's say you're a business where you're, you provide services. This is another opportunity to 
uh, share volumes, uh, valuable volumes of information. I'm going to say that a lot because it just really, um, it, it really describes the approach that is best for content on your website. So um, depending on how many services you have, depends on really the best way to organize your services portion of your website. You definitely want to describe and explain and promote every stream of income you have for your business. So even if it's just a little side gig, you don't know whether that's going to suddenly blow up and be something that everybody wants. And it might be, you know, a real um, significant money earner for you. So um, you need to start with at least one page that's called services or something uh, similar to that. Definitely want to use that word and uh, create a significant section for each individual service. If you find what you're writing about really needs more explanation, it's possible that it's better to do a pillar page that gives a highlight of each service and then an individual page to fully describe each individual service. Um, I've, uh, that's also a really nice way to organize things for people who are quickly going through your website and they just wanna filter through to what they're interested in. So on the descriptions, you want to set the expectations of what do you do? How does it work? What is your client's workflow? What are their, what should they expect for their engagement? Um, you don't need to put prices unless that works for your business, but you sure want to make sure that people know what they're buying and what you're going to provide. And you kind of want to set the, the framework in, in a friendly way. You don't want to be like, I won't do this and I won't do that. But you definitely want to make sure that you've described it enough that they can go and say that is the full description of what I'm going to buy. And having paid, uh, people can more easily pay with. Um, I'm getting a little internet is unstable. So if I freeze up, I apologize. I'm still here. Um, all right, so I'm gonna move on now to your contact page. And this is another place where I've seen people kind of cut to the chase and not, not use this as well as they can. On your contact page, you really need to have all pertinent contact information, the full list of everything. So you want all the pertinent phone numbers, um, your office number, if you make a cell phone available to people, if you receive text messages from clients, you want to annotate that. You definitely, if, if you're a brick and mortar where you want people to come to your door, put your physical address. You always want your business mailing address. Um, there so that you can get correspondence and then have a really robust contact form. You know, actually, sometimes you need a little more um, and sometimes you don't. Um, a basic contact form is always going to function and be fine, but it's nice to add a series of check boxes for why are people contacting you. So you can put in that list um, each of the different services you offer, or if you have an e-commerce um, shop on your website, you can say you, people uh, may want refund information or they may um, have a general question. So um, you just want to think through what are the sorts of reasons that people may contact me? And if you highlight that, it does two things. First of all, the email of their message that you receive will give you a heads up. This is the topic they want to talk about. Second of all, it's showing the um, user of your contact form that you really care about what's important to them. If every single uh, message you receive is just coming in as an email, it's like having um, a pile of papers on your desk and nothing's in a file folder. So that's just one of those nice to haves that just you know gives a little more sophistication to your communication with people. So. To summarize, your website can always be improved and updated to better present your business. And it's always on duty for the first encounter uh, for most potential customers and clients that they have with your business. You want it to be as good as it possibly can be. So let's talk a little briefly about website images because you have written content and you have image content. 
Website images, you really want to get the highest quality images to present your business products, employees, et cetera. If you can hire a professional photographer, there's um, that I recommend it highly. If you know someone who's got skills with a camera, really good to have somebody who's able to do that for you. You want to look at what's uh, the first of all, you want to have a list of various images. I call it a shot list. Um, and to basically say, what do I want to show on my website? And, you know, I've, I've created shot lists a lot of times. So that's another thing I'm happy to um, consult with about just kind of what kind of images would be useful. Because sometimes, you know, there's sometimes we make do with what we find in our phone photo gallery and really we can do better. Um, so you want to think through what's the message you're communicating with each image. Um, you want to consider what's the composition, what's in the shot. So if you have a, a um, you sell at the farmer's market and you got a whole bunch of pictures that were taken there, you want to just look to see is, is there somebody's dog in the background that's you don't want to have in your picture. Um, you want to make sure that you have curated what is captured in those images so that they don't look kind of scattered. I've had people use for um, e-commerce photos. They uh, take pictures of people wearing uh, apparel that they're selling and they, they just didn't understand or didn't look at or it wasn't important to them how the sunlight was creating such a sharp shadow that the clothing are obscured and the person's face is just uh, obscured and you can't tell that this is a really sweet piece that everybody would want. Um, so the composition, lighting, usually we like to say more is better, but diffuse lighting. So like if you have a, a location where you want to have pictures taken at all outside, an overcast high cloud day is best, better than a bright sunny day. Inside, you definitely want to add lights to illuminate the corners, make sure it doesn't look like a, a dull, you know, dark place. So website images really, really matter. There are, I have three sources of free, high quality um, stock photos. And I used to be really adamant that stock photos were just not the thing to do. I've completely changed, 180 degree. There, it's, today, there are so many, such a volume of beautiful stock images that um, that there's, there's no reason to avoid them out of, um, just because I, I'm going to drop into the chat. Um, that's not what I want. I want this. Here are my three links. Oh, that didn't work. That's my address again. Pardon me. Copy. There we go. Unsplash PX here and Pexels. Each one of these, you can download high, um, high quality um, images for free. Um, the thing about using images on your website, websites can only produce, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They can't show the highest quality that you need for printing. And so you wanna make sure that you're not asking your website to store in its um, library more than, or I should say images that um, are more than a thousand pixels on a side. So that's the key number. Um, whichever longest side, if it's a portrait, then it's on the, the vertical side. If it's uh, a landscape, then it's on the horizontal side. Um, you, you want as close to a thousand as the highest number that you try to show on your website. So almost every image is presented on these three um, with um, resolution, that's the word I'm searching for, with resolution that can go, you know, four or 5,000 pixels on a site. So those, that resolution is great for printing, but not good for your website because um, websites just can't show images with that resolution. And so you don't wanna um, unnecessarily bloat the size of your website library because that actually, each of those images impact how fast they load. And that directly impacts how fast you, the page loads. So that's getting a little wonky. 
But um, if you're going to download um, images from these three sources, download them at about 1,000 um, px on a side. Um, I I don't know how to answer that that question, Jay. I don't think um, I've never had to do the total size for a picture. Um, but if you just look at the um, aspect ratio, it'll tell you how many across and how many pixels across, how many pixels in height. So you should be good with that. All right. So that that was a really fast, very brief summary about images. We can go into in depth on images, but I I do highly recommend working with a professional photographer who can um, help you with that side of things. Um, so I'm just going to touch briefly on the because I'm on the message side of this discussion. We started with the mechanisms, all the tools. Now we're talking about what do you say, what do you post. I'm going to talk about social media now because I've, I've pretty much given a good summary of your website. Once your website is in place, social media will take most of your marketing attention, most of your day-to-day -day marketing attention. You are in a competition for eyeballs. And um, that's not a bad thing. The good news is there are eyeballs out there. Um, so you actually can reach the people who want what you're selling. And it's it's been revolutionary in our marketing world that social media is, is now such a mainstream thing. It is the most cost-effective way to connect with buyers and new clients. Um, you can... Uh, uh, use social media for free and you can buy ads. And today the cost of marketing, cost of buying advertising on social media is, is still exceedingly economical. If you know you just do some um, price comparison of what does a radio spot cost in this community? What does a newspaper ad cost in this community? What's their circulation? How many listeners, how many people you're gonna reach? Those statistics are available, and we need those um, those communication uh, companies. But social media, you can just reach a lot of people for a lot less money. And if you're strategic and you make a plan, you can keep from um, uh, you you can make that an effective ad buy. So once again, you want to make a plan using a calendar. Or, you know, you can even just use a yellow pad and a list, but make a plan for what is going to be your social media marketing choices, what will work for your business. Happy to work with you on coming up with that strategy. Follow the plan. Um, making those social media posts is a uh, very important use of your business hours. You know, we work in our business. We also need to work on our business. And then you adjust the plan as you go forward. Um, and if you find that you're just not getting it done, just back off, regroup, think it through, decide what your priorities are. Um, cause there's, this is not a have to, this is not a, you sh there's no should don't let anybody should on you. Just, you want to make an active plan for what works for you. So make your calendar, pre-write lots of posts. The cool thing about that is you can batch that work. You don't have to come up with it spontaneously because it's 10 o'clock in the morning on Wednesday and it's been four weeks. You know, that's that's not the right time to actually push something out publicly. That's the right time to work on the calendar and make a plan and then work your plan. And you can, um, I know on Facebook, you can create posts and you can schedule them so that like on, on a, a Friday afternoon when, um, or Friday morning, <laughs> I'm always creative in the morning. I'm not creative in the afternoon. But on a on a time where you just want to mark away from talking with people, um, you can schedule yourself a couple of hours and um, create four, five, 10, 20 concepts of posts, and then go back through and actually write the lead line, pick the picture, get everything set up, and then schedule it to go. And you can schedule yourself out a couple of weeks, even a month in advance. So make a plan, follow a plan, adjust the plan. And the question then will always arise, and this is a good thing to be asking yourself on a, on a repeating basis. How well do you know your clients and customers? 
Are, do you do you know who buys from you? Why do they buy from you? I just you know ask yourself that question once a month. Why do people buy from me? Um, we often think of our messaging from the point of view of what do I want to say to achieve my goals? And throughout this uh, presentation, I've I've been talking from that perspective. And I think we all start there. So that's that's why I start there when I'm talking with people. What what do you want to say about your business? But having gone through that um, thought exercise, it is so much more powerful to rewrite your messaging from the perspective that shows how what you're selling is helping your potential buyer to achieve his or her goals. So you want to think through, what do they need? What are their pain points? That's another jargon term we toss around a lot. What are they solving by buying from me? Use that as um, inspiration for what you want to say. So you want to write for the people, about the people. You want to appeal to their senses and to their emotions and to the solutions that they gain from working with you and buying from you. And thus ends my presentation. <laughs> and I'm now really happy to field questions and uh, any conversation, anybody else's ideas. Well, thank you so much, Susan. Um, there aren't any new questions in the chat, but I'll ask one just to get the ball rolling. Um, I'm wondering, since you've been working on this, we've been uh, offering the service for some time, what have you noticed in terms of people's confidence level after working with you for a while on their website or social media marketing? No, oh, that's a that's a fun question. I, I have found it to be, it, it's really fulfilling to watch someone start um, um, working with me. And I offer um, private confidential Zoom meeting consultation and schedule with people uh, once a week for as long as the program's around and, and for as long as they need. So um, it's kind of a free flowing conversation. And then we workshop based upon the results of those conversations. I've got um, one client who um, uh, stuck with me for many months. And over the course of a very extended period of time, she doubled the size of her business and quadrupled the number of people who um, are, are working with her. I've got another client who had shifted out of an employment situation into running her own business. And um, hers is a service-based business. And she now is receiving um, people booking for her services through so many channels, her phone, her website, social media. She got overwhelmed <laughs> and you know completely filled up her schedule. So real, it's a huge level of success. And both of those two clients went from knowing nothing about a business or any kind of website to being the ones who run their, creating and running their own websites and on two different platforms. So one was on a WordPress platform and the other, other one was on a Wix platform. I have strong opinions about which platforms I like to work with, but I try to choke those back. <laughs> and because the, what works for me is not always the best choice for another client. Um, so we go with what is the best fit for the existing business. But there's some things that are just consistent. And once, you know, it's, it's, like, it's like riding a bicycle. You know, the first time you get on, you're going to wobble around and need somebody to hold the seat. But eventually you can get from here to where you want to go and back and figure it out. And that's my goal. I've seen a great um, success rate um, of people who uh, accomplish their goals and now can use tools to support their business. Susan, there are a couple more questions in the chat now. Um, maybe we could open up people's mic since we're a small group and uh, I could ask Jay and Jenny to ask your questions. So, yeah, so I've seen a lot of businesses that have their own Facebook page, for example, or something like that. They have their own website, um, which is great if somebody's looking for them. But how do you identify where you want to be to reach people who are not coming to look for you yet? This is a really good question. So, um um, essentially what you're asking for, if, if I could just shift it into some jargon, um, it's a it's an organic search or a branded search. So a branded search is somebody's looking for your business name. 
But an organic search is they need what you sell or offer, and they don't know the name of your business. So something like restaurants near me, that's an organic search. And you sure want to show up in that list. Um, so um, this is where knowing what clients who are coming to you, what are they asking for? What problems are you solving? And using that is some of the um, brainstorming, the inspiration for the written content on your website. This is where search engine optimization starts to really matter. And that whole concept of writing to, to be responsive to what people are searching for, it's obviously part of your social media posting. So if you are writing about your services and giving them uh, on social media, brief descriptions and on your website, really full complete descriptions and on your social media posts, you are including a link to that page on your website or your contact page or just your homepage. Um, and you're posting regularly. And when I say regularly, you know, it's, it's different for every business. These days, um, some of the international um, social media gurus are saying, when they say multiple times a day, they think anybody who's posting fewer than 12 to 20 times a day is just not gonna compete. And that's just not reasonable. I, except for some, I just don't think it's reasonable for small businesses. That's why when I talk about making that calendar, you got to decide what's going to work for you. But as every single post that you push the button and is published adds to the content, the library you're slowly building on your account, let's say on your Facebook business page, you're adding more and more posts. And so when someone is doing one of those organic posts and they don't know about you, um, your website or your uh, your um, business, say your Facebook business page is more likely to be presented in the results for their search query. So that's why posting on social media uh, can, can be just a great source for advertising. But the other thing is if you're just not reaching people as fast as you want to, this is why, where buying an advert, an ad on Facebook starts to come into play because you get to pick the demographic of who you're trying to reach, what are their interests, what are their, their locations. And you know, for relatively inexpensive, you can get a targeted reach. And now you have a sponsored post in somebody's newsfeed. Um, but I'm thinking you know, specifically for you, Jay, I would think, that Facebook and LinkedIn are probably what I would recommend as uh, the two platforms for marketing your services. LinkedIn specifically because it's so much more business focused and almost every business, a larger, a medium size, small business and medium sized businesses are likely to have a LinkedIn uh, post and somebody who's monitoring that. So that might be a richer um, place for you to do social media posts. But I think, you know, really what you're, uh, uh, between the three, just uh, hoping somebody's going to know your business name. That's great if you're connecting with people. Um, for your business, you also might want to consider um, an emailing campaign. So your website's all filled out and worked on. You're doing the social media marketing, but an email campaign, you can go directly to the um, person that's going to work or that like either the HR department or uh, operations, you know, the COO or something like, you know, whatever email addresses you can find. So targeted uh, marketing for your business might be uh, just one more way to effectively reach people. Jenny, you are asking me, do you want to go ahead and ask me your question, Jenny? Hi. Yeah. Hi. Um, yeah, I, I really struggle with social media burnout. I, some, I have had experiences where I've been fully into it and it worked out great. And then I, I just couldn't handle it anymore. <laughs> and I burnt out and I struggle with kind of being consistent. I love your ideas about scheduling and calendars and streamlining. Um, but just getting like photos and content yeah. and um, the look that you want and the, uh, it's just a lot of work. Um, and 
I don't know if there's anything you can say about burnout or other ideas. I, hiring someone out seems hiring someone to do that seems complicated too. Um, mm. But can you address that? And also, I mentioned videos. Videos seem to be the um, most get the most views right now on, especially on Instagram, TikTok, of course. But uh, I'd love to hear what you have to say about that too. Um, uh, burnout is a real thing. Um, but it's not a new thing. Um, social media burnout is just another place in which a person can get overwhelmed. And I think that um, being, um, being good to yourself and understanding how are you uh, using your time and your resources and, and whether or not you're, um, you're using up more than what you have. It's really important to stay in touch with that. And as a small business owner, like I mentioned really briefly, we wear so many hats. You know, we are the accounts payable and the accounts receivable and we're the HR department and we're the, you know, we're the worker bee and we're the CEO. And, um, and then we have to put on the marketing department hat. It's just a lot. Um, I liked what you said uh, when you said specifically uh, being mindful of um, what, kind of, what kind of look you're portraying. That's talking about branding. And if you can organize um, what you want your brand to look like, you can simplify a lot of those choices. So, um, um, and I, I'm delighted to receive your application for this program. And I just, I understand you're, you've got a studio. So I'm just guessing that you're in the artist area. So um, if you're taking pictures or videos, um, it's really nice to kind of dial in how you do that. And uh, in such a way that you're comfortable with it. Um, a good example I have is West Coast Sea Glass. So Mary Beth Buki is a longtime friend of mine, but in this program, um, a new website was built for her. Mary Beth is also um, a really accomplished photographer, but she is a um, jewelry, um, she's a, a jewelry artist and she makes it with uh, sea glass. Gorgeous stuff. I'm usually wearing something of hers. Um, but her pictures are so carefully curated that um, that she's not just all over the place. I think you can, wherever you can simplify without losing too much um, is, I recommend it to just then like set up a little, a little um, photography location where your lights are in place and you decide what you're going to do. So the more you can curate how you produce your images, the easier it is to do those. Yes, video. Video is really powerful. We're all looking for a little glimpse into everybody's life. It's that that magpie. We all like to see something shiny. It's that little bit of voyeurism. We want to see what somebody else's life look like. I mean, it's just a real human thing. And so as a, as a seller, when you can um, capture some video, that's great. Video is also really time consuming for editing. So you just, you want to use that calendar, factor in the time, set a reasonable expectation for yourself, batch when you can. And after that, um, I'm really happy to talk with you, Jenny, in our consultations about what's going on specifically for you and how we can make it a little more streamlined, a little more effective but um, if you encounter burnout, best thing to do is take a break, but not too long. You don't want to disappear. <laughs> you want to be able to come back. Susan, do you have advice for people that really do want to hire this out? Like, are there local providers that you're networked with, or how would you assess somebody who says they can do your, you know, your internet marketing for you? Um, so I've I have some feelings about that. Um, I've had a hard time finding people I can recommend mm -hmm. because it really um, it really depends on the person's skill and whether or not they're staying up to date um, on how the platforms uh, function because there are always there are always little changes to user interface. You know, every time I log into Facebook, um, the business platform, it's like I got to I got to refine the button I was trying to find because they redesigned the screen. That's that's just the way it's going to be. Um, if you're going to hire somebody, you have to be really aware that you're giving the entire voice of all of your business into the hands of someone 
And they need to, it, it's really important that it doesn't just all run aground. So it's, it's very hard to completely just offload that to someone unless you're gonna monitor. Um, and this is where making your own calendar, that's, that's probably 90% of the job because then you're deciding what you're gonna say, how you're gonna say it and how often it's gonna be said. Then having somebody else basically be the stenographer to copy and paste those into a post and schedule them, that's, that's really doable. That can be an administrative task that can be hired out. But um, I've, I've had a number of people um, at, try or ask to hire me to just come and do their marketing. Well, it means I need to sit down with them for at least you know, an hour or two hours a week to know what's, because I don't work in their business. I'm, I'm, I'm not the one who's got the mission statement. Um, so I don't want to be completely discouraging about that. Um, but I will say that as a business owner, it's vital that you stay in front of the message and be the one crafting the message. But finding, you know, somebody who can who can uh, pick up some of those administrative tasks, you know, whenever there's a task that you're doing as a business owner, just hire somebody else to do it. I have heard a statistic that you're saving 50%, not 100% of the time that that task has been taking you from you. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a good thing to do, but you it's just vital you stay in front of the message of what's going out. Great. Susan, thank you so much for showing up. Um, I can tell you're passionate about this work and you care about people and I you do. want marketing to be done well. <laughs> and it sounds to me like you're really bending over backwards to help people here. And I appreciate that because in a rural place, you know, with uh, COVID not yet in the rear view mirror, we need help. So thank you for being here. And I really appreciate you. Well, this is my joy. And, you know, I'm I'm a subject matter expert. It's what I get to do to give back to our community. So thanks for the opportunity. Thank you, Susan.